We lost the volume. Not that I know about.
Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to St. John's on this wonderful day that God has blessed us with. Uh, I hear we've had some traffic problems on Lebanon Road trying to get here, so uh, there might be people coming late. But also, uh, Kathy just told me that Crystal is home sick with Riker. Uh, Peterson's, I think, had strep. Uh, Sally. And who else had COVID, came up with COVID? So there's a lot going on. So um, as we share the peace today, be careful. <laughs> you know, okay? Just be careful with that. Um, though they're worshiping with us online, again, thank you for being with us on this wonderful day that God has blessed us with. Um, after Sunday school today, we'll be putting together blessing bags, and we'll do that in the fellowship, in the former fellowship, no, the Sunday school area. It's always been a Sunday school area. No, I won't go there. Uh, so after Sunday school, we will be putting those together. And this today is Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, we are beginning Lent on Wednesday, so we will have services at noon and at 6.30 on Wednesday. And the day before, Marsha's not here yet. I'm trying to hold off as long as possible. But uh, Marsha was going to make an announcement about show of Tuesday, so I will make it. Um, you know, we'll be meeting from 5 to 7 in the Sunday school area for our you know, yearly extravaganza of eating too much pancakes and sausages as we give it all up for Lent, or whatever you're going to give up for Lent. But we'll be there from 5 to 7. We'll have some games and stuff going on. Bingo. And bingo is the game. And bingo is no. <laughs> the name. And uh, I think I remember Sally saying that we're going to have the kids help make ashes for Ash Wednesday. So uh, come and, and have fun. It'd be nice to raise your hands and see who's coming. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We're still going to be here. So uh, hey, Ezra. <laughs> uh, any other announcements uh, to come forward? All right, if not, let us begin. As you are able, please rise for Thanksgiving for baptism. <laughs> Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed 
every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the waters of life, for the waters to bathe in, water to drink, for waters to play in, and waters that inspire wonder, for water that gives life to our planet. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place, for the water from our tap, for rain, for the Cumberland and Stones River, and for Percy Priest and Old Hickory Lakes. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place. We give you thanks for your salvation through water, for delivering Noah and his family through the flood waters, for leading your people Israel through the sea <clears throat> into freedom, for preserving your prophet Elijah through the time of drought, for guiding your people across the Jordan into a new land, for quenching a Samaritan woman's thirst with living water. We give you thanks for your salvation through water. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized and for all who gather here, for godparents and baptismal sponsors, for children and grandchildren, for our brothers and sisters in Christ whom we have never seen, but to whom we are bound. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized. We give you thanks for the life in Christ through your Holy Spirit, for our entry into Jesus' death through these waters, for our new birth into a life of freedom and service, for our calling to be your people sent out for the life of the world. We give you thanks, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. If you're able to remain standing, we'll have our opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. And just a quick note. I mentioned about Mardi Gras. Is there anything you want to add? Is yeah. We have to go shopping tomorrow. If you could raise your hand, just come and just give us a quick count, uh, a rough count. And I know Nicole's bringing some people too. So, Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Today's reading centers on the transfer of power and authority from the prophet Elijah to Elisha. Their travels, which retrace the path of Joshua back to Moab, the place where Moses died and the parting of the waters demonstrate that Elisha and Elijah are legitimate successors of the great prophet Moses. The first reading is from 2 Kings, the second chapter. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know, be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, <coughs> Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you, for I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into pieces. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The spotlight of Christian ministry is not on the people who carry out ministry, but on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as God made light shine out of darkness at creation, God makes the light of Jesus Christ shine in our lives through Christian ministry. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers 
to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him, alleluia. Mark's gospel presents the transfiguration as a preview of what would become apparent to Jesus' followers after he rose from the dead. Confused disciples are given a vision of God's glory manifest in the beloved Son. The Holy Gospel today according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated and invite the children for you, please. Feeling better? Weren't you sick earlier this week? Yeah. Okay. Where's the right other? There. Huh? Oh yeah. So cool. Glad to have you guys here today. My grandma, my grandma, and grandpa are here. I know your grandma and grandpa are here today. They're right back there. I met them as they walked in the door. It's so good to have grandparents with us in it. It is fun. I remember my grandparents. Mm -hmm. One day, they in the, like, the hotel had a pool, and kind of did a little cannonball. Like, I, like, I kind of fall in. Um, you kind of fall in, did a cannonball? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Um, and I, it was I was trying to stop myself on my legs and I fell in. Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah. You know, how can I tie this in? <laughs> you know, we're all falling in here together to hear God's word. Hey, you know, I like listening to your stories. I do. Um, who do y'all listen to? God. <laughs> Jesus and God. Our elders. Teachers. Who do we listen to? Grown ups. Grown ups. And why do we listen to grown ups and teachers and elders? Yes, ma'am. Because they know more than us and they have more experience. They know more than us because they have more experiences. I think that's very true. Don't you think that's very true? Yeah, that's very good. And what do they teach us? To not die. To not die? We'll save that one for Sunday school. Because we are here to know that we will not die. So we will, if you want, we'll talk about that in Sunday school. What else do they teach us? What to do and what not to do. What to do and what not to do. 
And why do they tell you to do things and not do things? How do you think? Because some things are good for you and other things are not good for us. Right. Some things are good for us and some things are not good for us. And we need to know the difference. And we need to know that when we make the wrong choice, that they're still there and they love us and, and help us to learn from that, right? So yeah, we want to we want to listen to all those people, but you know who's the number one person we're supposed to listen to? Jesus. God. Yeah, God, Jesus is both the same because God said to the disciples on that mountain, "Listen to Him." You know, listen to Jesus, and what does Jesus tell us? To love everyone. To love everyone, and that even though we die we are raised to new life. And there's a whole lot we can unpack with that, but not here, not now. But we'll talk about that in Sunday school. Uh, because Jesus came to give us life, to give us life. And when we do the wrong things, you ever done bad things? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to put both hands up and use uh, fingers for each one. and just Each finger is like a thousand. You know, uh, God still loves us, no matter what. Did you have a question or are you just raising your hand? I'm just raising my hand. Just raising your hand. So we always want to listen to Jesus because Jesus is always going to tell us things that are good for us. And he does that. Why? Because he loves us. Absolutely. Always, always, always. There's nothing we can ever do to get Jesus not to love us. So remember that. And that's maybe we can all learn to listen to Jesus more, okay? So we can love more. Can you help me pray? Gracious God, thank you for sending Jesus. Help us to listen to him, to know his love, to share his love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> so long. Farewell. I'll be the same. They are so cool. I have to show you a real cannonball sometime. I used to love, and you know, and preacher seats. You know what preacher seats are? It's kind of like that. You just kind of go like this, and you, yeah, it makes a big splash. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher when I used to do that. <laughs> oh, Lord, pray with me. <laughs> Gracious God, just thank you. Uh, thank you for who you are and what you continue to do for us. Help us to listen to you always. Now, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your hearing. O oh, Lord, our rock and our redeemer, in whose name we pray. So one thing I want us to, to think about during a sermon is um, might be like the most important thing about church, life, faith. And it comes down to one word, and that word is relationship. So think about relationships as we go through today. So we have the wonderful transfiguration story. You've heard the story before, right? There's always a lot of questions. You know, I was going to ask the question, you know, what questions do you have? But I know I'm going to get the same answers. You're like, why are they up on a high mountain? What happened six days earlier? Why were they afraid? Who, why was Moses? Why was Elijah there? Why was the cloud? Why did God speak? And what did Jesus say? Did I miss anything? Any other questions? Because I'm going to address most of those right now. <laughs> Jesus' transfiguration was to continue to reveal, to unveil who Jesus was to them, and it is to help reveal who Jesus is to us today. At his baptism, if you remember, when Jesus was baptized, God said to Jesus, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. That's a very personal relationship, right? You are my son. Very one-on-one -on -one personal relationship between God and Jesus. To affirm who Jesus was to Peter, James, and John, and again to us, we see Jesus transfigured on that mountain where he was changed into his dazzling white appearance as God, as a purity as God. 
of God on earth that earth can't do but only God can do that's why Jesus came and then why was Elijah and Moses there Elijah was the great prophet we heard a little bit about him in our first reading today and he was the prophet who would would usher in the Messiah and then Moses Moses the great lawgiver right to, went up the mountain got the Ten Commandments to give to the people, to give them the law, which was all about love, loving God and loving each other. And so the law and the prophets are all about love, trying to help us to listen to Jesus, listen to God about God's love. And they both had mountaintop experiences. Um, Exodus 24 and chapters 24 and 34 and 1 Kings 19. So we hear God speak. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. But Jesus didn't say anything, did he, at that point? So we had to go back to six days earlier as the gospel reading began. And what Jesus had said six days earlier. And six days earlier, they're in a region called Caesarea Philippi, where there's a great palace to one of the Roman guys in a grandeur of the world, and Jesus is asking the disciples, who do the people say that I am? And they say, well, some say you're Elijah, you're John the Baptist reincarnated, or, or prophet. And then Jesus says, who do you say I am? And Peter makes a great confession. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus goes, good job, Peter. And then he tells Peter and the disciples that he is going to be horribly suffered and died killed, all that, and raised on the third day. And then, of course, Peter, being Peter, pulls Jesus aside. <laughs> he doesn't imagine that, pulling Jesus aside to get him to learn something. We see that in the Chosen series. Watch it. Um, and, and Jesus, and Peter goes, no, you, you're not going to do that. And, of course, get behind me, Satan. You know, you're thinking about you and not me. And then Jesus goes on to say, if anyone to become my disciples, guess what? You are going to have to pick up a cross and follow me. So that's what Jesus had said six days earlier. So why were the disciples so afraid? Well, you know, hearing, you know, that Jesus isn't the Messiah they wanted to be was very fearful. And then I guess maybe having to carry a cross not what they wanted to hear about all that suffering and pain and death. Besides calling them to listen to what Jesus said six days earlier, maybe God was also calling them to listen to everything that Jesus had ever said. His words and his actions that were revealing and unfailing the good news of the fulfillment of the law and the prophets that was revealing God's grace to the world. Ever since Adam and Eve, the world has been veiled. They have been blinded to God. They're actually afraid of God because of our self-centered, relationship-breaking, sinful lives of exclusion. Exclusion of others and God, which causes all the problems in their world as in our world. Problems of the world filled with loneliness, darkness, and all the pain, suffering, and deaths that our self-centered lives bring. Ever since Adam and Eve, God continued to shine the light of grace. God always forgave them, always. Not one time did God never forgive them. He did that by, at times, personally coming to them. And at other times, through the prophets and through the law. When the world still could not see, couldn't break down the barriers or destroy our veil to reveal God's love, Jesus, as the incarnate word of God, entered into our story right into our lives, to unveil, to reveal what had been hidden from the world's understanding about God 
ever since the fall in the garden. That was the gospel truth St. Paul emphatically spoke about in our text from 2 Corinthians. He was helping believers to not be blinded to others' beliefs. And he is trying to help unbelievers to not be blinded to never hear and come to know and believe in the good news of God's all-inclusive love that was being preached by religious leaders proclaiming a heretical gospel of self, which is always about exclusion of people that are not like them, which caused all the pain and the suffering in their very darkened world. And again, it was into our dark world that we created the incarnate word of God descended to. Jesus came to bring. Jesus came to shine the dazzling light of God's all-inclusive love, especially to those struggling, those struggling and perishing in body, mind, and spirit. Jesus came to help everyone to see what love looks like, to help everyone hear and know and to believe in the gospel, the good news of God's love given to the world through Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension. To help people today from perishing, to help people from fearing all the problems of life, all the problems of death and dying, and all the problems of God. As the church of Jesus Christ, as the mantle of grace was passed down from Elijah to Elisha, in our first lesson, and then from Elijah to the rest of the prophets, from God to Jesus, and Jesus to the disciples, and to Paul, and to countless others, that mantle of good news is now passed down and entrusted to us as recipients of the tearing down of the world's veil. It is now our turn. It is our turn to live, to share, to reveal the light of God's love for the world. On this mount of transfiguration, the divine voice announces to us, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Be in relationship with him. Knowing the power of the cross, knowing the everlasting light of Christ's love shining on us, may we go down this mountain to shine the good news of God's all-inclusive love. May we be transformed by the Christ to help all people, especially marginalized and perishing people, helping them to know that they are not hidden from God that they too are created in God's very image of love. St. Paul said in the Corinthians text, for it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness. You are shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I believe our self-centered, darkened world needs to know needs to see the dazzling light of the glory of God's face as it shines through Jesus, to see that glorious love lived and shined. I believe the best way to do that is found in that word, relationship, building relationships. Jesus came to our world to reveal, to help us know God has never and never will fall out of relationship with anyone, ever. John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world, you know the rest of it. John 3.17, you know that one? Yeah, memorize that one. For the Christ did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him, which Jesus did on his cross. When his life was finished, and he said, Father, forgive them, 
They just don't know. The time is now to know. That is the loving, caring relationship God has for you, for me, and for all people, and we saw the purpose for our upcoming ministry fair on March 3rd is to help us to know and to become involved in our God-given ministries, to partner with God to nurture and grow relationships with each other, to get to know each other again. We went a long time, folks, through three years of tornado, pandemic, rebuild, and still worried about pandemics and stuff, but the time is right to safely come together to get to know each other again so we can build those loving relationships that, that we so need in our lives. And two, we need to be, that ministry fair has helped to transform and equip us to let Christ's light of love shine through us, to help take away the veil of darkness, to help take away the world's sin and the many fears they bring by revealing God's love to bring more peace, more hope, and more joy into our world. When Jesus and his disciples went down the mountain that day, he told them not to tell anyone about the transfiguration. And I bet they're saying, thank you, Jesus. And we don't have a clue what just happened. And they couldn't know until after the resurrection. And then after the resurrection, what did they do? They went and told everybody. As beloved children of God, as we know the rest of the story, may we today and every day listen to Jesus, pick up our cross, and follow his way of humble service and love for all. What could a transfigured, a transformed world of love look like? Let's have some relationships and find out. Amen. of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the living Christ be with you all. And also with Let us carefully share God's peace with one another. And if you have offering, we have an offering envelope here. Or things online. Again, if you have an offering, you can place it in the place sometime during the offering. And we're going to have some special music by Joel. And 
grace stands beside me when death comes to call. Ushering loved ones in the breaking of all and of every good gift given freely to all. Well, grace is the greatest of all. Bless our monetary gifts to share your love with all. God, our Redeemer, thank you for the gift of Christ's body and blood. May the bread and wine of your steadfast love and faithfulness spring forth in, with, among, and through us for the sake of the world and all for the glory of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church that the transformational power of God enters the hearts of all people. May its leaders serve as examples of your grace and healing across time and space. God of grace, receive our prayer. We pray for the creation, that we will humbly observe the swirl of wind and the heat of the bright sun. Teach us to honor all you have made and to care for the animals, plants, air, and bodies of water of this planet. God of grace, we pray for those charged with leadership, lawmaking, and governance of our towns, states, and countries, that they will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and callings. God of grace, we pray for those who are sick and suffering especially all those on our prayer sheet and those we lift up to you now. And we do lift up those who have COVID this week for Sally Hanneman and for Mary Ann's uh, Winthrop's grandson, Nikolai, who came down with COVID also. Well, we pray for David Graham, uh, Jim's son. Jim is traveling up to Ohio today to be with his son. He has some more health issues, so be with David and his doctors and nurses and give Jim safe travel. And we pray for Susan Moss recovering from her hip surgery, and we pray for George Audrey as he waits biopsy results. <coughs> Guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, friendship, and care to any in need. God of grace, we pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity of all whom we encounter. God of grace. Gracious God, as you were transfigured, as you came to our world to show us the light of your love, help us to listen to your voice, your voice of love to bring more hope and peace into our world. We thank you for the many ministries that you provide for us to do that. But Lord, we thank you for music today. Uh, the way you, we listen to you through music and thank you, Joel, for that wonderful, wonderful song. And Lord, on this day of celebration, we do lift up the Drush family as Jerry and Natalie and their family have, have gone to Ohio to say their final earthly goodbyes to uh, Jerry's brother, uh, Stephen. Be with them as they celebrate his life tomorrow, but get, and just comfort them in their grief. God of grace. Trusting that all the saints, prophets, and those who die in faith are held in your care, 
we remember in thanksgiving those who have died. Grant us your gift of salvation as we await your coming again in glory. God of grace, knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now may we be bold to pray and even more bold to live the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. Come to the table where all are welcome and all, all means all. all. Come now, all is prepared. For those that are worshiping online, this is Christ's body and blood, God's love given and shed for you. Amen. Um, you know the routine, right? <laughs> Just come down the center aisle. One of y'all need to come. We're so formal. Thank you, Divine Christ. Thank you, Divine Christ. Thank you, Divine Christ. Well, that's the body of Christ, 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 the Christ, the body of 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 Christ, Christ, as you are able. <laughs> the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthens us this day and every day in his love and in his grace. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Jesus grants you grace and truth, and the Spirit send peace upon your hearts this day and forever. Amen. Amen.